Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to review the keyword to bind as part of Harlow 3.3. So in previous videos, we looked at the keyword bind. We've used it with macros like the cycling link, input, and input box. And the bind keyword allows us to bind a variable to whatever was input or used as part of those macros. The to bind keyword works in a similar way, but binds twice. Let's look at some examples to help us understand how this keyword works and how we might want to use it instead of bind as part of the same use of those macros. So we previously saw how the keyword bind allows us to bind to something. So here's an example right here, right? If we wanted to use cycling link, this macro to cycle through different links, we would bind to a particular variable and then whatever was chosen, we would have in that variable. It would be bound. And then we could use the show result link right here to see whatever that result is. The to bind keyword works in a very similar way right here, so this right here, but binds twice. That is, anything that is also sharing the to bind keyword and the same variable will have the same value within the same passage. That is, it is bound not only to the macro in which it appears, but anything anywhere else, it also appears in the same passage. Let me help you make sense of this. So let's start first with playing from example one. We will use the bind keyword and the to bind keyword. So over here, cheese, pepperoni, spinach, show result, topping was pepperoni. Same down here, spinach, cheese, pepperoni, show result, spinach. So right here, bind and to bind working exactly the same. Now, if we have multiple macros also using the same variable, we can to bind, that is bind multiple times or bind twice to those as well. So let's look at something slightly different in example two. So in example two, we will set this to name and then we will say, okay, for input, to bind to this variable. So what's going to happen is this value is going to be bound to the input macro but we will never see this text right here. You will never see this because it will take its bound value from whatever the variable is. So in previous examples of working with the input macro, we could provide the bind keyword, bind to a variable, and then give it some type of default value to show to a user or player. If we're using to bind, it assumes the value of whatever that variable is. So in example one, we saw when we used bind and to bind that we could bind, be bound to some type of variable for what the cycling link, cycle through the links, pick whatever we wanted, then we would have that, and we could use that value somewhere else. In this case, with to bind, it's bound everywhere. So as soon as I set it up, any future uses of to bind, and this includes this one, will have that same value. And if it changes, it also changes everywhere else. But let's just look at it in one instance. So let's go ahead and shift over here. So for example two, notice it says Dan, because the variable started with the value of Dan and it's using the to bind keyword instead of the bind keyword. So in the previous case, if we go back and change it, pull up example two, let's try and change this to bind. And now let's go ahead and uh, rerun this so we'll build play. Now we're seeing this. So this is the new value right here. But if we use to bind, it binds twice. And it will have whatever value this is as part of its input. So let's see something even stranger. Let's push this into example three. Well, we've seen cycling link, sequence link, input and input box so far in previous videos. So if we set up an initial value right here and we to bind it using input box, which is the longer version of input, then we can have whatever we have right here re-show up as part of the binding of that macro. So let's shift to example three and then we'll review what I've talked about. So example three, let's build and play. Notice it's words, words, words. So whatever the current value was, by using the to bind keyword, we bound to that macro and then overrode whatever its default value was previously established. So the to bind keyword seems like the bind keyword and works in a similar way, 
but if it has multiple macros or multiple uses of the to bind keyword in the same passage, they will all have the same values. They are bound twice, first to the initial value and then to whatever macros are using them. So this may seem a little bit silly at first. Why would we need bind and to bind? Well, there may be cases we'll look at in a different video of where this might be incredibly powerful. There might be cases where we want to bind to a variable that we've previously seen using cycling link or input or other things, and then have that immediately reflected in real time in a different macro. So again, this opens the door some really interesting interactions, but limited to a subset of macros. Uh, because if it worked with the other macros, it might potentially crash things. So we're limited to a subset of macros. We've seen cycling link, sequence link, input and input box, and there are uh, some others you can be very careful and use it with. But there might be some cases where we want to input something and then immediately see it reflected as part of cycling link or sequence link or other things. And we'll, we'll examine those in a future video. But the to bind keyword gives us the opportunity to bind twice. We bind to the value and we bind to the macro. So most of the time we want the bind keyword, but some of the times we might want the to bind keyword. And as I'll show in a future video, there are some cases where it produces some really interesting interactions where we bind across multiple macro usages in the same passage, have things mirroring and interacting in real time. But the to bind keyword, very useful as part of Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.